Oh, welcome back to Rickett's Reef. This video is part one of my DIY LED light fixture. I'm going to be replacing my tech with LEDs. I'm going to try and cut down on the cost of lighting for this tank. Yep, the electrical bill should pretty much be cut in half with this fixture. I'm thinking of doing either two or four supplemental T5s with the fixture. We'll kind of see how that goes. But this is what I'm working on. This is kind of the series. There's going to be multiple parts. I don't know how many parts it's going to take to finish the fixture. But I'm going to try and go from start to end and document as much as I can possibly stand documenting. Alright, let's go. First thing to do in my opinion is uh, research. Research, research, research. Figure out what your needs are for your tank. And once you've got that figured out, I highly recommend ordering your equipment first that you need to order online because while your stuff is in delivery and shipment um, you can start building your fixture if you want to build a fixture or you can start getting things ready for uh, your LEDs to come in and start getting worked. I ordered from Rapid LED. Now <laughs> it didn't really give me much time to work on my fixture because it came in three days which is just incredible uh, coming from the states to Canada especially. So it took three days for my equipment to get here. I went with Rapid LED because one, their service is amazing, two, their prices are great, uh, three, well now I know the shipping is just phenomenal, um, and the equipment seems, you know, all I need. I don't have to mess around with reading specs or crazy data sheets that I don't understand. I go to Rapid LED, they've got all the information clearly printed, clearly posted, and easy to understand. So once you've decided what you need, uh, reading some forums, I'll put some links on the bottom, some really good LED forums or on the bottom. Uh, read them first before you get involved with this stuff. There's a lot of information, there's a lot of stuff to understand. I don't even understand it all, but I think I understand enough to go ahead at this. So what did I get? I got power cords. I got the uh, 48 LED kit plus 6 LEDs for a moonlight. Uh, the kit comes with these here lenses. Those things actually, uh, it's kind of like a reflector. It, it pumps more light into the tank. Here are the LEDs. Nicely packed. I got a fan kit as well. Um, yeah, I took the other one out. There's supposed to be two. The other one's in the garage with my uh, fixture to be. I've got four dimmable drivers. Uh, it's part of the fan kit. This is a dimmer for the fans. Uh, the other driver for the moonlights. And I got some heat sinks. They also had a, a notice up recently saying that they were going to drill the heat sinks. Unfortunately, I did not order in time for to get that so I've got the uh, the paste there that's okay uh, 10 bucks a heat sink it's not a bad deal and there's enough room on here to move things around if I ever need to so yeah there's my equipment there's my LED stuff rapid LED did well uh, hopefully everything works and I'll update on that shortly okay later and the next thing you want to do while your stuff is shipping is start working on your uh, your fixtures, your your casing and stuff like that. Uh, here I've made a a remote ballast box. I'm going to keep my T5 and my uh, LED drivers in here, my wall warts, all my electronic stuff and it's going to have some fans on it. It's going to have my potentiometer switches popping at the top. Um, very simple DIY made with wood and paint and stuff like that. You can actually keep your ballast and stuff in your fixture if you want. Uh, that's the beauty about DIY is you can you can pretty much do whatever you want, however you want it, you know, within the confines of your skill and material. Um, I'm not going to show people how to make a box out of wood because that's pretty simple. And if you want to get the gist of how I make things, you can go back to how I built my stand on my 90 gallon. I'm basically repeating the same steps, just obviously on a smaller scale and with a, a little bit different dimensions because. These things aren't supporting weight like the like the stand for sure. So you can get a little more creative. This is just some two by fours and some old uh, some old plywood. I think it cost me maybe a two bucks to make this thing, three bucks if you include the paint. Um, 
So come back later and we'll show you what this thing looks like with components all over it and all that kind of jazz. Alright, let's go take a look at the actual fixture that's being built in progress. Okay, here is the beginning stages of my fixture. Um, I've painted the top gray because I found some mist tint paint at Home Depot for three bucks a can. Uh, the rest of the stuff I pretty much had left over in my garage, so you all that crap. Um, yeah, I've got tons of st stuff. I'm going to tile the front again so it will match my uh, stand. I found these little tiles exactly the same as the big tiles on my stand, so um, that'll be a nice uniform. These were in the uh, tile remnant bin at Home Depot for 20 cents each, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'll have some fans up here. I'll have fans on the side. And I'm going to make a channel. My LEDs are going to go in here. Uh, got a couple fans there and there because I'm including four T5s. One, two, three, four. And they're going to blow on the end caps. You don't really need cooling anywhere else on the light as I mentioned before. There's going to be a panel in the front for toggle switches to toggle things on and off. Um, as well, there'll be a few switches on the ballast box underneath the tank. So that'll give me some ease of control. I'm also going to be building a, uh, a rack that kind of pulls the light fixture out. It'll be hanging, but the whole top bar that it's hanging to will, will pull out for easy clean. I'm um, also going to get got a piece of plexiglass there to make a splash guard on this one. Didn't have it on my last one on the tech and it's kind of regretted it. It's annoying not having it. So that's the beginning stages. Again, it's just a basic box with some braces. Um, I tried to use the least and the lightest amount of wood as possible, so this fixture is super light. Like, I can pick it up with my baby finger. A little awkward, but I could do it. And that's that. I'll show you the fixture done in a, in a little bit. Alright, later. Alright, I'm about to just start soldering my first thing ever, which is uh, my moonlight bar. I'm doing that because if I mess it up a little bit, that's okay. One thing I wanted to let everyone know is that um, Rapid LED rocks. Uh, apparently they've already pre-tinned the, uh, the connection pads on the LED, so I don't have to go ahead and do that. All I need to do is pre-tin my wires, pop it on, touch it with the soldering iron, bam, connection made. So yeah, Rapid LED, right on, nice product. Okay, helpful tip and hint is to pre-tin your wires. You do this by applying solder with your soldering iron to the wire. Now if you if you type in pre-tin wires or tinning wires on YouTube you'll get a whole bunch of people showing you how to do it. Basically you just hold the tip of your soldering iron onto the bare wire, wait till it heats up, tap it with the solder, and it runs down. Okay? After you do that, go to your LED, take your soldering tip, touch it to your plus or minus depending which way you're hooking it up. When you're, when you're setting LEDs up to these meanwhile drivers, you need to attach one cord to the plus and then the out cord to the minus. And then that minus goes to the plus on the next LED and it creates a loop right back to the driver. And the current just kind of goes through that loop. Um, there's lots of threads that I'll be posting that'll explain how to do this. Just follow their instructions if you're wanting to do this. It's pretty simple. It takes very little skill. The only thing you got to try and do is not burn yourself with the soldering iron once it's hot. I also suggest looking up basic soldering techniques, how to tin your soldering iron, um, how to clean your soldering iron, stuff like that, how often you should tin it. So take a look at that stuff. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and set up this first string of moonlights and see how it goes. Another good little device for this, uh, I forgot to show it, is uh, this little clamp thing for holding wires because it's kind of hard to hold the wire hold the solder hold the soldering iron at the same time right that's, that's a three hand job uh, so I just made this actually I can fit LEDs in there too just for soldering stuff on there I thought I'd need to what I did is drilled holes in the end of this half a piece of 2 by 4 and I shoved in some uh, some bits of a coat hanger and then I just well, I had my nail gun my brad nailer and I put a couple staples to hold it in at the end of the coat hanger I attached some clips. Uh, it's actually the inside of some of these bad boys. You can get them for a couple cents. Um, 
that's out of the mon. One thing also I suggest if you make this to hold wires, you just flatten down the teeth on the clamps because they can actually pinch through the, uh, the insulation on the outside of the wire and that's not good. Um, you can also buy rigs that do this, but they're, I don't know, 20 bucks usually, somewhere 10 bucks around there. Uh, this costs a buck, maybe two. Yeah, so it's just save a couple bucks and it works well. All right, let's keep on soldering. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Well, actually, I don't know if you can see this. I'll get the old torch out. I have wired up my mood lights. Uh, with the other, with the main lights, I'm probably going to mount them before I wire them. With these ones, I just, it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal with these ones. It's just one long string with a lot of wire in between, so it's kind of cool. Um, I've got everything wired up. I've got my plus line going to a little quick connect there which goes to my first LED plus out the negative into the plus negative plus so on and so forth all the way back to the negative black wire to complete my string so that's my circuit that's kinda how it goes and that's gonna go mounted to uh, I don't know if you can see it over there that long L channel piece of aluminum and that's going to be my moon lights at the front of the tank. I will span the, the length of the tank. It connects to this constant current um, Meanwell LPC 35700 driver. Doesn't matter which way you connect the AC lines, but if you care, uh, brown, go brown to black, white to blue. And that will plug in. So let's see if I actually did this right. You're going to join me here on the first test excuse the uh, jittery camera All right make sure I don't blow myself up here kind of awkward yeah holding a camera and doing things just sucks oh, oh I see some some blue oh good enough ladies and gentlemen here we are so the first string worked. One, two, three, four, five, six LEDs. Nice and blue. It's probably not going to capture the real blue that I'm getting here because it's a hard spectrum for cameras to uh, grab, but holy crap, is that bright. I'm going to turn the lights off in here and uh, get a better gander. So that's it. There's no lights on in this room right now. And uh, yeah, wow. That's bright. So those will be those will be nice. Those will be the moonlights. Um, it might be a little more than, <laughs> than a moon, but it'll be on for just a little while. I won't have it on all night, just occasionally. And it'll also be a nice blue supplement over the whole tank. I was going to do four T5s, but I've realized I can only do uh, two now just because of the size of my tank, which is fine. Saves on electricity. And I can use my four ballasts on my frag tanks. So anyway, there we are, my first string of LEDs I've ever made, and it's a success, and it was actually fairly easy. Um, I'll document more as I go along. Okay, later.